In this uh, example, we want to find the relative extrema of the function that's given here, which is uh, which is f of x y equals to x squared over sixteen minus x squared over four. So the so for surface plots, uh, this is how you find uh, this is how you find the relative extrema. Okay, so we have to set the partials, the partial f with respect to x and the partial f with respect to y. We have to set both of those equal to zero. Solve solve that system, and then that's going to give us a a critical number, or sometimes they call it critical value, and then substitute that, evaluate that into d. And then d, depending on the sign, that will tell us whether we have a relative maximum or minimum. Okay, and also we have to look at the partial of f squared with respect to x squared. Okay. All right. So, so first let's find the partial of f with respect to x. So for that, remember we treat y as a constant and x as the variable. So this is going to give us minus uh, one half x. Okay, and then for the partial of f with respect to y, so in that case we treat x as the as a constant and y is the variable. So that's going to give us one eighth y. Okay, so now we're going to set each of these equal to zero. Okay. So that's going to give us minus one half x equals to zero. So that's going to give us x equal to zero. And then we set partial of f with respect to y equal to zero. That's going to give us y equals to zero. Okay. So there's our there's our critical value. Okay. Okay, so so we need to uh, we need to go ahead and find the partial f squared with respect to x squared, partial f squared with respect to y squared, and then the mixed partials. Okay, for x and y. So let's go ahead and find those. So f squared with respect to x squared. So we already have the partial of f with respect to x. So that's going to give us uh, minus one half. The partial of f squared with respect to y squared. So that's going to be one eighth. And then we have to find the partial f with respect to x, then respect to y. So we have the partial f with respect to x is minus one half x. So taking the derivative of that with respect to y, it will give us zero. Okay. So now we're going to plug this information into D. Okay. So D is, okay, it's going to be partial squared, I'm sorry, part, well, partial F squared with respect to X squared. Okay. And then partial F squared, Y squared. And then the partial of f with respect to x and y. Okay. So we have d is equal to, so for the partial f of x squared, for partial f is f squared with respect to x squared is minus one half. Okay. And multiply by uh, what we have for partial f squared with respect to y squared, that's going to be 1 8. And then this is just going to be 0. Okay. All right. So d, so our, our value for d is going to be 1 minus 1 over 16. And this is less than 0. 
So therefore, by our theorem, okay, um, f has neither a maximum nor a minimum. So this is what we call a saddle point, okay? So therefore, f has a saddle point at, okay, so 0, 0. So we plug in, if we want the z value for 0, just substitute 0, 0 into here. So we get 0 here, okay? So f has a saddle point at 0, 0 at the origin. And that corresponds to z equals 0, okay? All right. Okay, so now uh, let me show you the graph of this, okay? All right, so here's the graph. This is what it looks like. Okay, so you can, if you, right, so if you look at it this way, okay, it looks like, so if you look at this part here, okay, it looks like, right, there's a minimum at the origin, okay. So this is looking along the, uh, along the, uh, this direction, okay. Now if we take, if we turn this and look at it in this direction, okay, it looks like it has a, a maximum at the origin okay so right here okay so so in this case it looks like there's a maximum for this curve and over here it looks like there's a minimum okay so it turns out to be neither okay because you can't have a maximum minimum at the same time so this is again this is what we call a saddle point okay